Most of us who live middle class lives, often separated off from a world of extreme antagonism, <laughs> rancor, and controversy, can somehow convince ourselves that we have no enemies, telling ourselves that we live fairly harmonious and copacetic lives. I've heard people say to me, I don't have any enemies. However, that's really not the case of people by their circumstances or by their choices who find that a line is drawn in the sand and bringing forth the consequences of enmity. Let me illustrate something for you about that. My parents grew up in New Orleans during and before the Second World War. They married in 1950, and right after my father graduated from Tulane Law School, my parents decided to venture out. My father enlisted in the Army, which took he and my mother away from New Orleans and their familiar circumstances. During my father's tenure in the Judge Advocate General Corps, during the 1950s, he became involved in a number of watershed cases concerning racial justice. This involvement radically changed my parents' perspectives about race and structural injustice. After their five years in the Army, my parents eventually returned to New Orleans to raise their family where I was born. During that time, though, they became involved in the Civil Rights Movement. It was at that time that my parents, my brothers, and my sister and I began to experience extreme antagonism, rancor, controversy with people who hated my family and hated them for their involvement in the civil rights movement to restore justice for African American peoples. In clear and unadulterated ways, it convinced us as a family that people really hated us. People wrote terrible letters threatening us phone calls terrorizing and frightening our well-being, and there were people who simply would not let their children play with us growing up. Jesus of Nazareth clearly had enemies. He positioned himself religiously and socially in first century Palestine, undoubtedly causing Ways. His preaching of the kingdom of God, especially to the dispossessed of his world, caused controversy. For sure, Jesus of Nazareth had adversaries. His death by crucifixion was insurably the mark of a man whose life was in line with the stances that he took. Nevertheless, in relationship to today's gospel, it's not so important that Jesus had enemies. What is pertinent is how he responded to enmity, how Jesus dealt with hostility, hatred, and animosity. What is important is Jesus' response to the violence that came his way. What is salient is that the violence was not returned with more violence. And his eventual crucifixion was not simply the mark of victimhood, but was the response of love to the violence that came his way. Love your enemies characterizes how we work our salvation out through nonviolence. First of all, loving your enemies does not mean that you like your adversaries, but it does mean 
that you refuse to internalize the violence that comes your way. It means that we will not succumb to the temptation to return the antipathy that can be directed our way and toward us. In a society that has gutter politics from both the left and the right, this is no easy message for any of us. What it means to dispossess, dispossess ourselves of the violence that comes our way and seems too often second nature is very, very difficult in our world. And yet today's gospel is even more relevant to us who witness the terrorism of violence at every turn. Loving your enemies is impossible without the deep and abiding moral and religious imperative of turning over our most difficult challenges that we face to our God realizing that such things cannot be achieved on our own moral compass alone. The love of enemies is rooted in a conviction by God's nonviolence that the return of hatred and rancor will only result in more violence and ultimately violence to ourselves. May the love of God offered in the incarnation of God's only Son and poured out in the cross of Christ Jesus enter into our hearts this day and every day in the refusal and in the refusal to return violence when and if it comes our way. Let us understand more fully of what it means to love our enemies pray for those